Happy to be joined by Isaiah Livers of Michigan, Geo Baker from Rutgers, and Jordan Bohannon from Iowa, all of them leaders in the not NCAA property movement. Guys, I want to start with this. You guys have been around college basketball for quite a while, all of your seniors. Isaiah, I'll start with you. What has your college basketball experience been like? Um, I mean, the memories, uh, obviously creating a brotherhood and being at the University of Michigan has been great for me. Um, being in the Big Ten, a very competitive conference, it's been it's been a dream. It's been all that I hoped for. I grew up watching a lot of Big Ten basketball. It's all that I expected for sure. So I made a lot of friends, you know, a lot of connects. I had fun. You know, it's, it's definitely a career that I'll remember for the rest of my life, telling my kids about the stories that I did in college and all the little things like that. But it's been pretty good for the most part. Gio? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would agree with Isaiah, just um, really special experience. Um, you know, it's been a really special four years. I would say that, you know, a lot of my teammates started out as just friends and, and now we're really family. Um, you know, these these are guys who I'm, you know, going to hopefully invite to my future wedding or, you know, anything like that. I'll be at their wedding. So, um, you know, those are truly my brothers. But just the whole college experience has been great. Um, you know, just looking back, it's it's been it's been an amazing experience. Jordan. Yeah, I think what they said, just the brotherhood that this has created for us to, you know, have friends for the rest of our lives, you know, without, you know, us speaking up about, you know, certain issues, you know, me, uh, Gio, Isaiah, myself, you know, we became even closer because of what we have accomplished and, you know, teams across the board of, you know, meeting across, you know, the Big Ten Conference has been huge for a, a lot of us. Jordan, given the decision that you guys have made to point out some things you'd like to see change, things that you believe are unfair and that many people believe are unfair about college basketball, how has that impacted uh, the way you feel about the entire enterprise of college basketball? I think the fact that us athletes experiencing, you know, the NCAA tournament firsthand and going through, especially this year with COVID and the once in a lifetime, you know, pandemic that we had to play through, the fact that we were able to experience it all made us even more wanting to learn about the enterprise and understand the you know inner workings of what goes on behind the scenes for us to play. You know, if you look at what we had to do just to even play this year, we sacrificed so much not even playing, not even being with our families, not seeing them after games, not you know seeing our girlfriends, not seeing our friends, and we got tested every single day. That was a Big Ten protocol. We had to get up in the morning and. Um, get tested and not many workers and professionals across the board were getting tested every single day like we were so that just shows you know what essential workers we truly were this past year yeah no going off that um, it was one of the di most difficult seasons I've ever had to get through um, getting up between six to eight a.m. every day you know that's really hard for a team you got young guys who are coming in on campus you know they don't even get to experience the the, the college life. They don't get to come in and, you know, go to the parties in the summer, uh, hang out at the clubs and do all that, you know, college student stuff. Um, no, it was guys had to get to bed on time so they could wake up to get tested. It was, it was, it was the, de it was a true definition of a sacrificial season. And I think a lot of guys did good. I think the big 10 for the most part, from what I've been focused on, did a great job this year with COVID testing and guys is, you know, following the rules because they want to play the game they love. So that was just one of the years I just put sacrifice on it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I agree with both of them. Uh, you know, it definitely was, it was just hard mentally, honestly. Um, you know, we we all sacrificed a lot just trying to stay inside and, you know, stay away from people. But, you know, you have to think about the mental toll that it took on everybody as well. Like it was, you know, there was times where you're just kind of paranoid, like, oh, like I, I didn't wash my hands here or or my, my mask just slipped off. And you don't even know, you know, how you could possibly get the virus. So you just kind of, you just always think about it in the back of your head and you add that to, you know, what already is, um, you know, hard and challenging what a basketball season is in college basketball. So I feel like just adding that mental stress from, from COVID was, was tough on everybody. And it just showed all of us, you know, how much we're truly sacrificing and how big of a part we are of college basketball. And, and Gio, you made very clear on social media what you would like to see happen instrumental in the not NCAA property hashtag. What response did you get to uh, being outspoken? I mean, it was, it was some great responses. And, you know, obviously there's, there's people who are 
going to be against it, but that's just part of, you know, what we're doing, you know, that's, that's expected. Um, you know, I feel like some people are just afraid of change. Um, you know, and that's understandable, but I was always just trying to give, you know, my perspectives on things and, you know, and I would go and ask my teammates, like, cause a lot of people are saying, Oh, you already have a scholarship. So what I did was I went to my walk-ons and I asked them about their perspective. So Luke Nathan, who's a walk-on on my team, he's basically his town, Randolph, New Jersey. He's basically a legend in his town. He can't go to his town and have a Luke Nathan basketball camp because the NCAA doesn't allow it. Um, Daniel Loback on my team, another walk-on, he is an amazing artist. Like he can, he can customize any type of shoes. He can make any type of painting, but he can't start an Instagram page called Daniel Loback art or something like that because the NCAA won't allow it. So I feel like when you look at each individual's perspective, what the NCAA is doing is basically taking away our uniqueness and, and, you know, who we are as people, basically they're just saying that we're all just entertainment instead of actual people who bring uh, different skill sets and, and different unique like properties. I think that's, that's a really interesting point. I, and Isaiah, I want to get to that, but I'd like to know what kind of reaction you've gotten from wearing the t-shirt on the bench during games that, that has the hashtag on it. Yeah. Um, obviously some positive, some negative, like Gio said, uh, it's the world we live in and especially what we're trying to do. People are scared to make changes and definitely me wearing that shirt, especially being the only one on the floor wearing the shirt. I just know there's people looking at me, either making comments. I don't, I'm not a guy to really check the comments, but you know, people will tell me, um, uh, what are you complaining for? You should be grateful. I'm like, I'm grateful. Like you, you want to put yourself in my shoes and then call me grateful. Uh, it's, it's kind of just like slapping the face to athletes. They expect us to go out here and perform. Like Gio was talking about our mental. It's like, there's no worry about our mental at all. And we have to go out here and perform and perform on a daily schedule. And nothing comes out of it. We, they use our faces, you know, our jerseys and stuff like that. We get nothing out of it. Uh, it's, it's hard for, it's hard to be an NCAA athlete, honestly. Uh, you, people talk about you get free food, a stipend and stuff like that. You're like, yeah, that's cool. But I just feel like I'm being used a lot. I feel like a university or NCA or a conference can make so much money off one name. And the, the guy who's like putting all the work in to get to that point gets nothing out of it. So that's, that's my take on it. And a lot of, Obviously, a lot of negative comments on Twitter and Instagram, but, you know, that's just how life works. Jordan, what do you think when you hear, I mean, you've had injuries, you've put in time. What do you think when you hear someone say, look, man, you should be you should be grateful. You've got the state of the art training facilities. You've got elite coaching. uh, You've got all the food you want, everything. When they question your gratitude, what do you think? Yeah, I totally understand that perspective when you're out, out, out and looking in onto what, you know, we're performing on TV and you're not really understanding what we're going through on a daily basis. But you also have to understand that we're so grateful for this opportunity of having a platform that we want to change it for the better. And I think that's the most important thing out of all of this is we're not saying that we're standing up here and being ungrateful for everything that we're given. We're given a lot, but we're also we're giving a lot as athletes as well. And I think what we're getting as scholarships is the bare minimum of what we deserve as college athletes. I'm not even talking about being paid as a salary, but our ability to go out in the, into the outside public in our communities and perform third party contracts that every other student, student on campus can perform. And we're the only ones limited on what we can and cannot accomplish on the outside. And I think right there is it's a, it's a civil right issue at, at the end of the day. And we believe that this is going to impact, you know, future generations to come if we're able to get this thing going here. But Isaiah, both you and Gio said that you think sometimes people are afraid of change. And the NCAA has said that it wants to do this, yet it keeps moving along sluggishly and, and roadblocks keep coming. From your perspective, what do you think they're afraid of? I mean, I mean, I really just think it's changed because, I mean, you, you just don't know, you know, what could happen. I've heard a lot of people say that, well, you know, well, boosters can, you know, just basically just pay a guy a whole lot of money. But, you know, when, when you think about it, like there's only like players like Zion Williamson, for example, like there's only the, the top one percent isn't what truly matters in this situation. I think it's it's about everyone else, because, you know, the reality of it is that not everyone's going to go to the NBA. Um, you know, I had a teammate, Corey Sanders, who had 120,000 followers uh, coming out of high school. But 
and he had a daughter. He had a daughter, you know, from from a rough situation, but he was not able to to make any type of money out of college. And he, you know, he doesn't end up going uh, anywhere after that, anywhere, you know, that he, where he's making a lot of money. So I feel like just that, like that, those are the type of people that we need to be thinking about in the situation, not not the top one percent where where oh well they they may get a, a whole lot of money for this or that. Um, that's just the way I see it. Definitely, I would agree with that. I feel like that's definitely what NCAA is worried about. They're worried about guys uh, using it as a recruiting method. Uh, come here, you get you get paid more by our boosters. Uh, to your or we'll pay more for your T-shirt that you're selling, like quote unquote. Like I feel like that's little stuff that they're worried about. But Geo is right. Like the the real pictures for the people, like for the athletes and the student athletes who actually need it, and that's why we're pushing so hard for this movement. That stuff already happens too. Like there's already there's already cheating going on, you know. And, and we're not gonna go out and say names or nothing that, but 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 the reality of it is, you know, people have gotten caught seriously. And at the end of the day, a cheater is gonna cheat no matter what. So if if that's how they feel, you know, you could set bound, you could set specific rules, specific boundaries. Cheaters are gonna go around those no matter what. So I feel like just it would it would still be better overall for college basketball and there will still be cheaters no matter what and that's still the NCAA's job to to handle that accordingly from my perspective I, I think you guys said civil rights issue and and I agree with that why and, and my question would be for them why the limitations and Isaiah to your point wouldn't the market eventually take care of it if someone did want to pay extra for somebody's t-shirt or whatever I mean, is that a fair assessment? No, definitely. I mean, if that's how if that's how it's gonna work, but I mean, we can't sit here and think about like what he said, like those one time generational athletes that we're trying to recruit. Like, there's actually people who need to be like, yeah, you get a stipend and stuff, yeah, but kid people, for example, like he said, could have a child and they need extra support and they're putting all that work in for their school and they don't get anything out of it. Like, that's tough, uh, and it, it is. I technically the job it is technically a job of the NCA to like take control and watch over these like cheating scandals or whatever. Like we're not here to talk about cheating scandals or anything, but that's that's definitely something that needs to be worried about. Jordan, what what would you like uh, to be the result, or what would you like to come out of this proposed meeting with uh, NCAA President Mark Emmert? Well, we first just want a dialogue to start off. I think. The fact of the matter is from the email exchanges that have occurred already, he's more worried about the revenue driven corporations and revenue driven you know, mentality that NCA has in order to you know, take care of that first rather than the civil right issues that's going on. You can bring up the Supreme Court case um, with Austin and you know that might be decided in the next couple of weeks or so and you know NCA is doing everything possible to lobby against that and doing what they can to not let you know to get that antitrust exemption that they want and at the end of the day I feel like you know President Emmert's ways of going about everything has gone totally opposite what he should have you know bringing up the difference of weight rooms between the men and women you know he was really nowhere to be found to make a statement on why that was the case why was that huge discrepancy between the two when that should never happen. That should have been equal. And if they really truly care about women, they would have been, you know, done that from day one. And he really put down on Dan Gabbett and took the blame on that. And, you know, he was, he didn't really make a comment about it until a random reporter bumped into him in the hallway. And that just shows that there's been a lack of leadership from, you know, Mr. Emmert. And we want a dialogue to, you know, hear why these things have occurred. And I think that's the most important thing is to have a college athlete in these meetings to really understand what is going on with the corporation. What did you think of the idea that he would meet with the three of you, I believe, but only after the tournament? Like I said, I think his priorities are in different, you know, way of what they should. He, he has different priorities right now and it's all revenue driven in our perspective. And that's why if he wants to continue hammering that there's an amateur model out there, why is he so revenue driven? Why is he making all this money a year? I think he's over 3 million a year that he's making as NCA president. Why can't they figure out name and likeness when they said back in January last year that they would get it figured out? Now, why are they all these delays happening? Why is he delaying this meeting 
for two more weeks. I mean, everything's just delay, delay, delay with Mark Emmer. And it's never of an open dialogue of, you know, why exactly he's doing these certain things. I think that's the most frustrating thing out of all of it. And that's why you saw so many athletes stand up finally this last, you know, tournament right here. Gio, athletes stood up, players stood up in the tournament. It's the biggest stage in college basketball. It wasn't just the three of you. There were 15 or maybe more teams and players represented, several players represented from a number of teams. To what extent were the players willing to go to make sure that these concerns were heard? Meaning, uh, was there discussion of delays or boycotts or anything like that? Yeah, um, you know, all, everyone was, was very committed, honestly. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of surprising because, uh, you know, guys can be scared. You know, it's, it's tough. You know, a lot of people were telling, uh, telling us three to focus on our games, uh, telling other people to just focus on the games. Um, you know, but what, what us three tried to do was basically just explain, like, this is a lot bigger than, than just winning a couple of basketball games. Um, you know, this is real change. Um, you know, this is something that could really make a difference. And um, guys were, I mean, guys were willing to do a lot. Like I got guys on my team to wear the not NCAA property t-shirts during warmups. Um, we definitely talked about delaying games. Uh, us and Clemson actually were, were talking about delaying the game, but basically what, what ended up happening was that we all believe that the, the television channel was going to get changed as soon as we, as soon as we tried something. So it ended up not going through and you could see there was fear on both sides. Like every time I was talking to the Clemson players, like you could tell they wanted to do it, but, you know, what are their coaches going to think? You know, what are, what are our coaches going to think? Um, does that mess up your mental for the game? And, you know, for me, it was a unique situation because we hadn't made the tournament in 30 years. So I didn't want to ask guys, you know, to, to go out of their way to, to delay something or, or protest something that, that Rutgers fans haven't seen in, in 30 years. Like that's a really long time. So it was, it was definitely tough, but um, yeah, I mean, there was definitely talks about it. I, Isaiah, what do your coaches think? of this and you may be in a little different situation because of uh, Juwan's background and the number of time, number of years in the NBA and the situation he had in, in college or at least not him directly, but with the fab five, but what, what do coaches think of the stand you guys have taken? Man, coach Howard and the rest of the coaching staff, you know, we're Michigan, Michigan culture is a, is huge on like really like being yourself. So as most as, Right when I brought this up, there was no, hey, no, you can't even do that. You should focus on your game or let the team focus because I've been out. Let the team focus. Uh, and personally, I was thinking about that in my head. Like, there was a lot of late nights where I'm like, do I want to text my, my team night before game to two days before game? Do I want to pass out, you know, give these some of these shirts they got to buy? Um, but other than that, it was – I kind of chose, like, obviously let them focus. Uh, Coach Howard – being the guy he is, you know, what he went through through college and definitely having experience of playing college and NBA, uh, definitely unique, like you said. He supported it. Um, he's another guy, like, I, I don't want to mess with him before a game, and that's just how it is. But after the game, he sure to give me positive comments about it. He said, you know, like, it's about that time. Like, I, I really like this T-shirt. I like what you're doing, like what you're standing for, like that you're using your voice. And that's the rest of the coaching staff. That's the rest of the players, you know. They were all for me. They had my back right away. There was not one person in our travel party that just kind of hesitated and tried to uh, back away from it. You know, like I said, we're all here to support, and it's about time, you know, um, we get some changes in the NCAA. Have you guys thought about a potential downside, unintended consequences? One of the things that I hear often from coaches is, what's the reaction going to be when guys like the three of you are quite marketable and others maybe not so much or maybe other unintended consequences that I, that I haven't thought of. Jordan, have you, have you considered those? And if so, what do you think about that? Oh man, for sure. There's definitely downside to anything that whenever you make change to a big model like the NCAA has right now. But if you look at it from the perspective of coaches salaries, there's never any, you know, downside of an assistant coach being paid X amount of dollars and the head coach paying X amount of dollars. There's never an argument about that. One is getting paid more because, you know, one's a head coach, one's an assistant coach. And it's the same thing if you want to go down the line of performing third-party contracts and in, in the as college athletes in NCA, that if you're better at doing something, you're going to let the market figure out what your value is. And I think that's the most important, you know, fact of it all is we're in a free market, you know, environment in, in America and 
and we're being denied uh, a potential of making money where majority of these athletes across the board in NCA are African American athletes. And a lot of them come from poor situations. And the fact that's why I believe this is a civil rights issue and the that a lot of them are being limited on that fact of a matter. And it's just across the board on men's, women's sports as well that, you know, they look at the twins from Fresno State, the women's basketball players, they have over almost 3 million followers on TikTok. It's just not men's that are able to capitalize off this. It goes both sides of, of, of the gender aisle. And I think that's the beauty, beauty of it is just let your markability take an effect, whatever you they believe that that is. Gio, what do you think? I mean, I feel like Jordan just <laughs> just said it all to me. <laughs> to be honest with you, nail in the coffin. He, he got he got that one. Jeez. <laughs> Good job, Jago. What, what do you think if college basketball or college sports and football and basketball? I mean, while there certainly would be exceptions for women's athletes and and popular sports, and maybe in Iowa wrestlers would do well, you know, or whatever it might be. Let's say name, image, and likeness rights are granted specifically to college basketball geo what impact does it have i mean i think it just changes everything um in what ways i i know you're saying basketball but you, you know it 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 just it i'm trying to think how i put this so for my team you know we have a lot of guys who focus on other things other than basketball i feel like it just shows the human side of who we are um you know, I feel like now people will look at us as much more than a basketball player. You know, when people think of name, image, and likeness, the first thing they think of is like uh, clothing brands, sponsors, but, you know, there's so much more to it. You know, two, two of my teammates have um, nonprofit organizations that, that are for helping people. You know, uh, Miles Johnson has, has, a, has a website uh, basically just trying to get African-American kids to get into STEM, you know, science, technology, uh, engineering, and math. Uh, Paul Mulcahy has the Grateful Four Foundation, which is basically just about spreading positivity, you know? So I think that it, you know, the possibilities are just endless. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask, well, how much money would you really make? But like the answer is the question, you know, you really have no idea how much money that, uh, someone can make because each person is just unique and, and themselves. And um, that's what makes it so, so special is that it's not just about basketball anymore. It's about the person. Yeah. I was just going to really say that it's, doesn't even have to be about how good of a player you are compared to this other player. And you're getting paid off just because you average 20 points a game. Um, guys can like now not, it doesn't have to be like, okay, let me do this, make this money and then go to the, go to the NBA. Like now guys can focus on like Gio said, art, music, you know, selling clothes. Like some guys want to sell clothes so bad, but they can't because, you know, they don't have an NIL law, but that's, that's one of the few things that's, that whoever's going to watch this should think about is it's we're not just basketball players we're human beings too and there are there are several instances in which college athletes are at the height of their popularity whether whether that is profiting off of that because of their on the field talents or their off the field ones they have this is the zenith of their popularity right now and Isaiah you you would see that at Michigan I would think uh, perhaps as well as anywhere in the country yeah, no, Michigan's definitely one of those places where you kind of walk around your campus. And I don't know if Gio, Jordan, they probably experienced the same thing. Um, you're almost like a college celebrity. You know, there's there's owners at like burger places or just food places, you know, the guys that are itching to literally just give you a free hot dog or a free pizza. And then you like, you can't, you can't accept it. It's just the law, like you can't accept it. And it's like, dang, like, this dude, he just wants to give me a free pizza, man. Like, I'm hungry after practice, and you can't accept it. So that's that's one of the things that is just really hard to do walking around on campus. And you have to, you literally have to be literally on – like, I've heard – uh, actually, I heard someone talk about – I don't know if it was Jordan or Gio, but they had a brother when they went to school. They had, like, a list of places to stay away from just because of the NCAA violation of, you know – them just giving you something for free and you can't accept it and that's just I'm like you got to have a list now so now you got college kids that are worrying about school um, worrying about how to make money while they're playing their sport like that's that's a lot to balance and now like think you add up the hours there's no time to make like do anything side for yourself you know like we talked about making music art and you know 
all little things that makes us human. We don't just play basketball. We have other hobbies as well that we would like to benefit from. Gio, how confident are you that this movement will result in the success that you think it should? Oh, very confident. Um, you know, as, as soon as we started it, uh, you know, people were jumping on board fast, like quicker than I expected. Um, you know, guys were just, you know, ready to speak up. And I think they were really just waiting for, you know, a couple of strong voices like, like ourselves. And, um, and, and, and they were just, they were waiting for that. And I think that we're trying to push for July. Um, basically what I, what I've been hearing after talking to my coach, you know, talking to other people is that they think that what we've done is sped up the process and eventually now it's going to get done. So I'm, I'm very confident in it. Isaiah. I'm with you on that one. Uh, I feel like we got us, us three right here. Um, done a great job of like this, like Jordan said, being organized. Uh, we have specific goals laid out. We're not switching our goals day in, day out. Honestly, when you look at it, um, it's easy for me to say that it's simple because we sit here and talk about it and, you know, we're the ones actually having to go through it. Uh, but other maybe like for like a different viewer could be like, you know, it's not that simple because guys like we talked about boosters getting involved and like Gio has a great point talking about cheaters are going to cheat. That's just that's just how the world works. So I feel like very confident in this group and I'm just excited to see what happens. I was even a I was a walk on who got cut and rightfully so, by the way. Um, so I've been around this forever and care a lot about it. If this changes and name, image, and likeness is granted, how would that impact what you would tell uh, a guy coming out of high school who's maybe making a decision about whether to play college basketball or pursue something in the G League or overseas? How could this improve uh, the attractive nature, the, uh, how attractive it is to spend time in college? Isaiah, I'll start with you. Yeah, this was actually a point I was going to bring up earlier, but yeah, this is this is like NIL is a perfect situation to like like what happened last year with the team McKnight. Team was created because kids like I'm not speaking for them, and not that I know anything about them, but you can always assume that they don't have the the wealthiest uh, situation at home, and they wanted. And there's no there's there's no like making that side money for yourself because they can't, it's like, it's, it's like against NCAA violations. So they said, they decided, you know, I'm gonna take my talents to G league, pay me some money. And then that's one year and then I can get drafted and then I can give back to my family. So I feel like with NIL being passed in the United States would really help, you know, college basketball, you know, they, you know, like we were kind of make a deal with them. Like viewer, viewers would rise. It'd be talented players playing top players playing. They're not going to skip. Cause I can, Kind of guarantee you this year, there's that that's not gonna be the only G League and night team. They're gonna a lot of high schoolers are seeing what they're doing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to follow them. So this is a great opportunity to get the NIL laws passed so guys will go to college, you know, at least get that chance to have that college education, uh, make some money in college based off based off their name image likeness. Uh and just play college basketball. Like, you know, we don't want you don't want these kids skipping college basketball. It's it's really important and I hear a lot of NBA players that talk about, like, I talked to uh, Jordan Poole. He recently NBA. He talked to some guys who went straight from high school to the NBA. And I'm like, and they're talking about how, you know, I would have went to college. I'm not going to put their names up. I wouldn't have went to college if, you know, I got paid, you know, just a little bit money than they were doing. And back then it was even worse than what we get now. So it's just, I feel like that will literally make college basketball and people's lives just, Less stressful being the having that chance to go to college and experience. Yeah, just to just to add to that, I was also gonna bring up that point. So I'm just, I was really happy that you asked that question. But um, yeah, I just think it would get it would get people to stay in college as well. Like you know, you're talking about high school kids, but you know, there's a lot of people who, who try to leave early when they're they're not really ready. But you know, they feel like they have to. You know, they feel like they have to make that decision because uh, because of money. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, you know, the NCAA says they care about their student athletes. Well, you know, if we're getting paid in college um, off NIL, you know, guys are going to stay in college. Guys are going to graduate college. You know, there's more degrees. And, you know, what, uh, what Jordan was saying about how for basketball and football, it's mostly black athletes. Like we're like the least educated race in the United States right now. You know, this is something that that is an issue. And and this would only help help people get more educated, um, get their degrees and, and stay in college and, and 
you know, like, like Isaiah said, I mean, it just, it's college basketball, you know, it, it's, it's amazing to play college basketball. You know, you don't want kids skipping out on that. And, you know, there'll be some talented guys that will decide to stay because they know they can make money in college while also getting their degree. And uh, I think that's the most important thing. The other thing to add as well, and just going back to the NCAA and what we sign for national letter of intent, we're basically signing, you know, having, having the opportunity to play bas college basketball and not making money, it shouldn't be a byproduct because that's basically what's happening when we sign to play college basketball. We're being limited in that aspect. So for that to be another you know, change in what the NCAA does, like they're talking about, it'll create more college basketball players, college football players, college athletes in general to want to play in college and stay in college because you're not signing you know, limitations away like that. Guys, I think this has been great. Is there, uh, is, is there anything in the area that you guys would like to talk about that, that I didn't ask you about? For the fact of the matter, for state legislation that has occurred, you know, myself and a couple of my teammates, as well as women's basketball players and a couple of players from other Iowa State and you and I, we, you know, helped meet with a couple, you know, legislators in our respective state and helped draft a bill to be introduced. And we're pushing like crazy to get it moved forward. We're trying to bring awareness as much as possible. So having dialogue like this is huge for know state officials and federal officials to see that you know this is an important issue and you look at the vice president Camila Harris she's one of the biggest advocates for college athletes there is and and we're hoping that the Biden administration will fulfill our requests of you know having a meeting with us and understanding that this is an important dialogue to have and I know there's a lot of different dialogue out there that's probably more important than this but this is also right up there with you know how much of a civil right issue that is occurring currently with NCA guys uh, I really appreciate you guys making time. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thanks for giving us an opportunity, man. We really appreciate it.